Hey everybody, Darren Austin Hall coming with you with another Wisdom Warrior transmission from here in Costa Rica where I am hunkered down during these intense times. I just want to give you a sense of where I live right now. This is a beautiful oceanfront view here in Costa Rica and this is my little cabina, this is my bedroom upstairs. And Feeling very blessed to be living with some beautiful community here, some beautiful artists, and uh, life has been pretty, pretty good here. Um, definitely feeling all the things in say the world, checking in with family and friends back in Toronto and such, and feeling all the grief and the despair and the confusion and also the beauty and all the things right now that's going on. Um, <clears throat> and I just wanted to share right off the bat that. I just wanted to give a big uh, props to <clears throat> to all the people just on Facebook who are engaging in discussions around truth right now. You know, there's a lot of really powerful conversations happening online um, with people, you know, just questioning narratives, but also just like helping and support each other out. And I know sometimes those discussions can get really intense and uh, there's a lot of people sort of criticizing each other and being quite speaking with a lot of conviction and a lot of conspiracy theories floating around and um, you know it's definitely a time to be mindful in how we communicate to each other it's always how we communicate that to me is more important and but it's exciting just to see uh, everyone just talking and trying to figure things out um, I know it can be really challenging sometimes when you're bombarded with so much information but I think what we're witnessing here is just the, the collective distrust that people have with the media and such, and also just these official sort of organizations who have, you know, in some ways been very beautiful and supportive of our humanity, but in other ways have, have really failed us. And so I think it's important that, you know, these discussions are taking place, but I think it's also important to be really humble and to acknowledge when one is wrong, um, to not get overly emotional about things. Um, I had a really cool discussion with a friend today just about the whole 5G corona virus thing and I had shared a video um, by this medical doctor and he rightfully shared an article where uh, a lot of the points that that doctor had made were refuted so that was a, a good moment for me just to acknowledge that and to understand that um, you know truth is a collective creation you know it takes all of us expressing our viewpoints and holding them with uh, tolerance and not getting too emotional in our reactions, knowing that there are a lot of truths that uh, we may not want to look at, and we have a knee-jerk reaction to be defensive when those things are happening, and that no one necessarily has the whole absolute truth. We all have pieces of the truth, and so it's important to realize that and how to constellate our conversations so that we can all recognize each other and give space, um, especially, you know, if someone is in a misinformed position uh, it's important then to you know speak to the person gently and tenderly in a in a friendly way at least at first uh, because you know that can be a fragile moment for that person especially on Facebook with all the public eyes on them to to appear kind of wrong um, and I think there are ways to communicate these things to bring everyone into solidarity around truth finding and just you know holding to what Socrates said you know that we don't know everything or anything really for that matter it's important to always inquire and to hold that that kind of mystery as well about everything <clears throat> so I know it's wearing on people I also want to just share I mean I know it's ironic that this is a social media post but to take breaks from social media right now because we are just witnessing a lot of the collective just venting a lot of their um, emotions because a lot of people are scared and rightfully so there is a, a very infectious <clears throat> virus going around and um, and it's very serious and people are dying and I think it's important to acknowledge that at the same time I think it's important to acknowledge that the media has stirred up a certain hysteria around it I've seen lots of different articles that have been written that I've you know had to check um, people's posting on them because their the headlines are really clickbait and they're not 100% accurate and there is still a lot of information coming out that needs to be questioned and I shared a really nice post, a very concise post by uh, my friend Dr. Sachin Patel, he's a functional medicine doctor this morning and 
he made a really good point that you know a lot of the information that we get from the WHO, the CDC, and all of the the so-called medical experts in the mainstream media, a lot of them are coming at it from a very allopathic Western medicine-based gaze. And as someone who has a diploma in Chinese medicine and alternative therapy, and I practiced for a number of years, um, I have a certain level of know-how on that front as well. And I can share that, you know, I've for a long time been very disenchanted with uh, Western medicine and the allopathic uh, perspective. There are definitely beautiful things to be offered, but we really need to start leaning into more of a complementary based medical system where, you know, we can see hospitals in the future having um, naturopathy, homeopathy, Chinese medicine, allopathic medicine, Reiki, uh, all of the things uh, integrated together. And I really believe that we have right now the pieces for the most powerful healthcare uh, to be ever offered humanity. Um, but it's going to take a lot of respecting each other and conversing with each other to realize that, hey, we all have the common desire to take humanity into a greater set of wellness and to care for their health. But there may be very different perspectives on how that's done. And one thing I'll share about allopathic medicine, I just posted uh, uh, this today about um, you know, how my father, you know, he passed away in the hospital after um, contracting a bacterial infection that flowed around hospitals uh, a lot um, because he was immunosuppressed. He was on over 12 pharmaceutical medita medications by the time he died. Even the doctor on staff who first saw him when he was committed to the hospital was absolutely shocked that, you know, he would have been put on so many different kinds of medicines were quite, quite contradictory to each other. Um, and of course, his immune system was so suppressed because he'd been on immunosuppressors for so long. He had rheumatoid arthritis and other health problems that he was very vulnerable and he, he pretty much went through a two-month decline. And near the end of his life, uh, he was unable to ingest solid food. So they put him on this kind of fluid food made by Nestle, of all of the corporations. And condensed milk was the primary ingredient, which is primarily made of white sugar. And of course sugar just feeds bacteria and the minute they put him on this uh, I was helpless you know to protest against it but I knew that this was going to be really serious and, it, and he didn't live for much longer after that fact um, so it's not to do a blanket shaming of Western allopathic medicine not at all you know it's just to be real scientists on this and realize that science is basically the discipline of uncovering truth through any kind of like discipline process and as Einstein, you know, said, we should always be more interested in the mysterious. Um, so the things that we don't know. And I think Western medicine right now is being pushed into a corner to sort of, uh, you know, be vulnerable and realize that it can't really take care of the situation completely itself. Another example that Sachin had posted was that, you know, they're giving away donuts to healthcare workers on the front lines, which is to me, culpable with murder because you're just feeding them white sugar that's going to like attack their immune system, create inflammation. And these frontline workers who need actually the opposite, they probably need to be fasting from white sugar and they need natural based medicines. They should be doing like they are in China every day, doing Qigong and Tai Chi in the hospitals. They should be taking things like astragalus to boost not only a respiratory tonic, but to boost their immune system and kick out the viral infection. Um, there's tons of things that the public needs to be informed about, which is starting to be you know, disseminated through our own people's channels on social media, but to me it's an outrage that this is not public knowledge and being disseminated by the mainstream media. This should be talked about on the CBC, the BBC, all the media should be telling people a five to ten point plan of nature-based medicines that they can do to boost their immunity. Such things as simple things as like going outside in the sunlight and bathing naked really bathing naked and getting the sun on every part of your body is probably one of the most powerful antiviral things you can do uh, I do hope this is a turning point that from this point on we will realize that we need the earth for our medicines and we, we need to trust our bodies and we need to allow nature to really trust to, to do the work as Hippocrates the father of modern medicine said you know it is the natural forces within the body that are the true curative agents of disease um, the last thing I'll share on that is just an interesting anecdote. Um, you know, the person who actually discovered uh, viruses, um, Louis Pasteur, uh, he actually admitted on his deathbed that it wasn't the virus that we should be afraid of. It's actually 
the terrain of our bodies that are more important in the actual development of viruses. And of course, they, the mainstream information um, disseminators did not run with that at all. They disseminated that the virus was what we should fear. And, and to me, that's an absolute um, sham and, and a crime. People should be aware of that, um, that even Louis Pasteur himself you know, shared that the body and its state of wellness is the most important thing. I mean, if you've seen videos of Wim Hof, he's gone into hospitals and had doctors inject him with diseases. And he's shown that his body, because it's at such an optimum immuno rate with breath work and other um, methods that he's discovered, uh, is able to repel, you know, these diseases, like, very quickly. Uh, so I think this is a big wake-up call for us. And it's all rooting into this whole idea of Gaia awakening. You know, I've been saying this in my other Wisdom Warrior talks, that we're in the age of prophecy being fulfilled. And according to the European indigenous Gnostics that I've been following through the Nag Hammadi, one of the most, Nag Hammadi library, one of the most ancient documents ever found of the pagan peoples who were eradicated by the Roman Christian Empire, um, they said that the goddess of Earth is Sophia, and that she's alive, she's our planetary mother, this planet is a living goddess, and that she was in kind of this long state of slumber, and that there would be come a time when she would wake up, and because of symbiosis, because we are sim symbiotically connected and interfaced with our consciousness, we would wake up in kind, and that this would be the start of a shift of ages where we would overthrow tyrannies on our planet that have been suppressing us from really living our true anthropos, our true human genius. And I do believe this is, uh, <laughs> sorry, my biggest problem right now is there are lizards and iguanas everywhere and they've been invading my cabin. So you can probably hear in the background, might be the chicken, so uh, love it, love living in the jungle. Um, but Gaia is really, I believe, awakening right now and we're seeing a lot of evidence in the fact that there's a lot of regeneration going on. People are seeing clean skies, blue skies for the first time in Beijing. I saw the other day that th there's no smog in Los Angeles right now. People are hearing birds in places and cities where they weren't before and people are really falling in love with the earth they're they're realizing wow there's this other presence here that the closed world of the city completely shuts us off from and and that's vitally important that's one of the most important sort of consequences of ironically that's happening through this pandemic you know there's never absolutely right or an absolutely wrong situation there's both right and wrong happening right now it's it's horrible that people are dying from this virus but it's also beautiful that it's causing this pause for mother earth to regenerate and to start to become loquacious to talkative with us again by just seeing the scenes of her beauty returning and it's also just showing us how quickly she regenerates i mean what if we were to do a pause like this once a year to allow the earth to sort of take a break and uh and just regenerate herself. Uh, it's the same with the body. You know, the minute you start taking all the toxins out of the body, the body can heal things like cancer actually very, very quickly. Um, so this is also part of Gaia Awakening. You know, we're realizing the beauty and profundity of nature itself, whether it's nature-based medicines that we're now lamenting for to help us boost our immunity and to actually work in complementary uh, paradigms to help allopathic medicine take the next step forward to offer true holistic medicine that could be the most supreme healthcare ever. But it's also just this kind of spiritual mystical experience that's been happening to myself and others in meditation where they've been feeling the presence of the earth. Um, I know this sounds a little like woo-woo, but I've been doing meditations for the last two weeks here on the beach and I've been feeling the presence of Gaia, this beautiful, loving, motherly light. She speaks to me. Uh, it's been really profound and so I've been sharing this in the videos and asking for other people to share if they've been having similar experiences and people have been I swear this is something global uh, so I really 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 entreat you to spend time in this pause to meditate and connect with Gaia connect with Mother Earth and spread the good news on this uh, I'd love to see a movement a Gaia, a Gaia awakening movement where we all pronounce ourselves Gaian you know to borrow John Lan Lash's beautiful new identification of our humanity beyond nationality and, and religious cultural um, tropes to really pronounce ourselves as being I am Gaian, I am of the earth, I'm a child of the earth because she is our mother. This is what the Gnostic scriptures say that she actually created us which is so so profound. So I'd be really interested to just hear from you and hear you know about your own experiences with Gaia awakening and this symbiosis, symbiosis um, 
this interdependent arising uh, that's really occurring right now with her presence, which I find really, really um, absolutely uh, stunning. Um, Hmm, I think that's it for me today. I'm trying to remember what else I wrote in the in the subheading, but I think that was uh, pretty much it. Uh, I hope you are all staying safe. I hope you're all staying sacred. Uh, I hope you're finding time to, to unplug from social media. I just wanted to send out as well. I know a lot of us are having a hard time, you know, making ends meet right now as this economy also goes through a transition, which, you know, let's pray that it's part of some greater transmutation um, where we can actually have an economy that's built on care and interdependence rather than this like um, sycophantic selfishness that has led to like horrible class divisions. Um, it could be true, who knows. Um, I just want to share out there that I know a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff on social media. I mean, I'm doing these talks, which is great, but just for all of us and for myself to even hear this message, it's, it's definitely a time to, as I like to say, make time for timelessness and to step away from the social media and that way of doing that is the old world order. Um, this is huge what's happening right now. We are really seeing the dismantling of a whole way of life and it's very hard, but I think it's also something that we've been deeply praying for. You know, a moment, a momentous moment where we can actually finally radically transform our ways of life, the civilization that's been cannibalizing itself and cannibalizing the the ecology of the planet so um, let's take the time you know to really hook into her as well the guidance of Gaia because it is said that Sophia her ancient name means wisdom and that she is really speaking to us in the wellspring of our heart this is what all the ancient mystics said that the heart is a portal to this guiding realm of infinite truth and wisdom and I really believe it's it's her voice it's her presence that is speaking through us so I hope that we all spend time asking and hooking into that symbiotic spiritual relationship with these greater forces to realize that you know our species needs to be guided not just by our own sovereignty but with the sovereignty around us of these higher worlds see that other worlds that interpenetrate our own um, it's a really beautiful time um, to hook into that because a lot of the distractions are gone you know uh, there's not sports to watch anymore and cultural events going outside and I know that's really sad on a certain level but on another level it's a really awesome opportunity to really go deep to go deep in your inner world as that world out there sort of uh, shuts down a little um, on a personal note I just want to share that I've been releasing a lot of really beautiful new music uh, I just released a new song called Oh My Goddess it'll be up on Spotify very soon it's on my Bandcamp page it's I feel it's like an anthem for the new world it's about uh, yeah it's it's an anthem for the goddess and my friend Maya from a lunar ritual music uh, put some beautiful vocals on it as well and I just released as well a spoken word album called Woman, um, Five Passion Poems to the Divine Feminine. Uh, that'll be up on Spotify really soon as well. I also released my song Lionheart, which was produced by Jeremy Legault. And I'm just putting the finishing touches on an EP called For Earth, of which Gaia, uh, or Oh My Goddess, is the first single of. Uh, but some really exciting music that I'll be sharing very soon. And um, yeah sending you all the love and the blessings from Costa Rica here, the land of Pura Vida. Make sure you get naked in that sunlight when it comes out. I know some of you in the northern hemisphere, that's a little difficult, but anytime that sun gets out, uh, take off those clothes and go do a happy dance with your beloved or your friends and just pray to the sun, to Grandfather Sun, to just offer its super potent antiviral medicines and just the vitality. And you know, make that a daily practice. The Essenes, who are uh, an ancient uh, mystical uh, culture in ancient Palestine, uh, they said daily naked sunbathing was essential to their like super uh, legendary health that they embody. So stay glorious, and I will keep on doing these updates here and there when I can. And um, yeah, sending you all tons of love just give you a little other glimpse of where I am and I'll just give you a quick little tour this is my little kitchen this is my little front patio up here's the bedroom Ooh, nice and I'll just take you down here just 
to give you a sense of this wonderland that I'm living in. So this is the ocean. Oh, here's Kata, our gracious host. There's Kata and Whiskey. Whiskey, you're on my Facebook Live. Oh, <laughs> you're Facebook living too? Oh, she's watching my Facebook live. Okay, have fun. Kat is going sunbathing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is our, our main guest house here. I'm just taking you, taking a little tour because I want you to meet a special friend of mine. A special friend of mine. Can you guess? It's a non human friend. Here we go. This is our little kitchen. Woo. Okay, let's hope let's hope he's here. Hope he's here. Oh no, I don't <laughs> Casper 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 Well there is over there. Casper I don't know if you can see. Oh, it's a horse. Yep, we got a horse. <laughs> Anyways, sending y'all lots of love. Maybe I can catch a little glimpse of Casper over here. It's my buddy, Stephen Key. I just walked into these wood chimes. Oh my God. This is so weird. Everyone's watching my Facebook Live. I just walked into some wood chimes. That really happened. And this is the view. This is where I'm writing my great eco-spiritual novel at the moment as well. Here's some chickens. Casper's in there somewhere. He's hiding. He's like camera shy. <laughs> He's totally camera shy. Anyways, isn't that ridiculous? Wow. Anyways, I don't want to make anyone too jealous wherever you are. I know it's pretty gray in Canada right now. But get your solar rays. I'll send you lots of love. Pura vida. Woo!